Okay, we are back on the Chad Hasty Show. This is Scott Mann, the Sandstorm Scholar, and in studio with us is Precinct 4 Lubbock County Commissioner Patty Jones. Thank you for being here, Commissioner. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy coming on the show to visit. Well, I, I appreciate you being here today, and, and let me say, uh, Commissioner Jones, you had three weeks warning you you there are all kinds of excuses you could have come up with you're here you know the things we want to talk about i appreciate that patty jones has always been willing to be held accountable for her work as commissioner and she and i disagree with with some of the things she does some of the policies but what i value commissioner is someone who will who will come look at you be on a hot mic and explain what they're doing so thanks for being here Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, that's just part of life. You're not going to agree with everybody on everything. And that's what makes our democracy. That's what makes our country what it is, is you can agree to disagree. That's exactly right. If somebody asks you to give a short answer, 30 seconds, what is the county's job? Uh, the county's job uh, in about 30 seconds is the fact that we are responsible for the budget. We are responsible for the uh taxes for Lubbock County, setting the tax rate. We're responsible for appointing a certain few individuals. We, um, What I do a lot with a lot of people, I compare it to, it's like a board of directors almost of overseeing uh, the management of the county, even though you have as many elected officials, seeing, looking at the big picture of everything for Lubbock County. And and the county's primary responsibility, let's say our top, our top three Criminal justice has to be one of those. You maintain the court system, the jail, the sheriff's department. You maintain a small road system in the county. Mm -hmm. What else? Those are about the two major things that you end up doing. Well, like you said, we are responsible for the maintaining of the inmates that we have in the county jail. We are responsible for the judicial system all the way through on that. We are responsible for... Uh, maintaining the permanent records uh, in the district and county clerks. That's your real property. That's your um, criminal records uh, from divorces to uh, CPS cases, that sort of thing. And so there there are certain things that the county is responsible for that is set out by statute or state law that it's not an if or maybe, it is a shell. And that's what we do. And the county is an extension of the state of Texas. Absolutely. We are an extension of the state of Texas that um, – the way I like it is that it's almost kind of like a school board as well. You're there to make sure that the policies that are put in place by the state legislature, by the Constitution, that those are carried out to the letter of the law. Now, the number one source, I'm sure, of, of any complaints that, that you get is the road system. We do. We get that, you know, it's on a daily basis or a on an average basis, people don't call us about, you know, uh, inmates in the jail or they don't call us about a filing fee that they had to pay in the clerk's office. They call about roads. And it's nothing new. No. When I was 12 years old, I remember my mother on a manual typewriter sitting at the table typing a letter to the county commissioner <laughs> about the roads. Yes. Because every time it rained, we couldn't get out. Now, what's happened in the last... 40 years in terms of county roads. At one time, the people who lived on a county road were farmers. Correct. And they knew it was a dirt road when they built that house. And they knew they wouldn't be able to get out when it rained a lot. Correct. And that was true 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it is true today. But but what has changed about who lives in the county? Well, I think we've all seen uh, an influx of, uh, or maybe you can call it an outflux, uh, folks that have been living in town that have wanted to have either more space. Um, a lot of the reasons we hear is that they want to get away from so many uh, property taxes and they want to get away from uh, regulations, uh, ordinances, codes that are in the city that we don't have out in the county. Now, we do have some um, uh, subdivision regulations, some things like that, There's, but it's much more uh, vague out in the county than it is in town. So we've seen a huge influx of folks moving out into the county, and a lot of them, uh, bless their hearts, they they find a good deal on a piece of property, maybe that a farmer or uh, somebody that has bought some land for uh, development have put up for sale, and not having ever been out into the county, they don't really know what to look for, 
and they talk about they got a really good price on this piece of property. And for us, we could just about what I call, <clears throat> I grew up on the farm, so what I call eyeballing, you could just stand there and see that, well, you know, you may have got a good piece of property or a good price on this piece of property, but the piece of property you're in is either in a playa lake or it's on the edge of a playa lake or a low spot, and it's going to flood. Mother Nature is going to go to the low spots. There's no questions about it. So if you move out in the county, and, and let's say you have a $175,000 house and you no longer pay that 60-some cents property tax you would if you were in Wolforth or some of these other little towns or 55, 57, 52, whatever Lubbock's is, you save a 1000 bucks. Mm-hmm. And and when you save that $1,000, what, what you are not getting is a guarantee of a paved street. You're not getting uh, water. You're not getting sewer. and But you get all the advantages of country life. Mm-hmm. And when it rains, you get to stay there and enjoy those advantages, uh, th- right? That is correct. You okay. Know. So talk to me about county – What the – the, let's look at the big picture, or not the big picture, but some major problems. What okay. are you doing? Uh, let's get off the dirt roads. Okay. We, those are going to be dirt roads for a while. I know you gradually paved them. The one I grew up on is, is a paved road now, East Erskine. But talk to us about what you're doing with the problem spots. Okay. The, when we talk about problem spots, the one that always comes up is Woodrow Road. Why mm-hmm. is that a problem? How long has it been a problem? What are you going to do about it? Okay. Before I go to Woodrow Road, I'd just like to say another one more comment is that um, there's a saying that I have that uh, Mother Nature can undo in one of her rain events uh, that it takes us, can take us years to get get from. You know, we had the hurricane rains in 2008. We had them in 2010. 2015, uh, I don't know if you didn't live there, you probably don't remember. There was quite a bit of flooding around Lubbock County, but City of Shallow Water was underwater, along with a whole lot of the roads out in that area. Well, we're still trying to get some of those roads built back because of the way they, the way they washed, and um, so it just it takes again it takes a while to get back to something. You know, if we've got what we consider an emergency, that we have individuals that cannot get out of their house, or we have uh, we get phone calls for people that have either hospice coming or home health coming to their homes. You know, we try to, our best to get to those areas where we know those situations are. But as far as the overall road, uh, it just takes us a while to, to get there because in Lubbock County, we've got 1,100 miles of road to maintain. And how much of that is dirt road? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, we've got about 300 that's paved. We've got a portion of it that is caliche, but we have a large portion that is still dirt roads. Now, I will tell you, when Kenny Mains was... Uh, Commissioner, he had a policy in Precinct 1 that he basically left in the shop with his guys and told anybody that called that, okay, if you live on a dirt road or you move on a dirt road, it's going to stay a dirt road. If it's a caliche road, it's going to stay a caliche road. If it's paved, we'll keep it paved. But there wasn't, and actually for the county, we're not really charged with building roads. Really all we're charged with uh, by statute is just maintenance. And so uh, we've been able to do more than that in some areas. But anyway, on, I just wanted to make those comments on, on sure. the roads. But to Woodrow Road, yes, we know that's been an issue. Uh, it's been so unfortunate that there have been several young people that have been killed on Woodrow Road. Because uh, when Lubbock Cooper, years ago, it was just a small country school. And you didn't have to have all the major roads to it, that sort of thing. Well, we've seen what has happened uh, over time. And I know people think we may not have been looking looking at it, but we have been looking at this and studying this to decide how and what's the best to do. We've been with, uh, we've met with TxDOT. They, has give, they have given us some information on that as far as Woodrow Road. Now, uh, they've given us an estimate. And again, this is a, a preliminary estimate uh, as far as what it would cost to Uh, make Woodrow Road a five-lane highway. That would be from US 87 to Slide. Is that about five, six miles? About five miles. Five miles. About five miles. Anyway, the estimate they've given us on that right now is a little under 30 million. There's about seven, seven million, a little over seven million that's for the right-of-way and the rest of it's for construction. 
So that's what we've been looking at. And our next question is, of course, we don't have the money to just write a check to do that. So we've talked about whether or not we ought to have a bond election. Well, if you start having to have a bond election, let me back up. This is all about public safety. It's not about a, it, yeah, yeah, this would be nice to have this. It would be great to have that road widened for several various other reasons, but this is about public safety. Okay. And, and let's talk about that. Who drives this road? Now, if, if you don't live in that part of the county, mm-hmm. uh, Woodrow Road's just a name to you. Mm-hmm. But, but this is the thoroughfare to the Cooper schools. Yes. That's who drives – children drive this road. Yes. Idiots drive this road. Let's, the, the commissioner didn't say that. <laughs> we'll just stipulate to the fact that children drive crazy. Uh, right now, it is a two-lane road with no shoulder on one side, with a, a, a makeshift shoulder on, on the, the westbound side that I'm sure relieves some of the traffic turning right. But this is a, this is the road children drive on, and, and this school has, has – quadrupled in size at mm-hmm. least in the last uh, 25 or 30 years and and now we've got a real problem and it's going to become a greater problem when we start working on the outer loop correct we'll have diverted traffic so that's what we're talking about how uh, tell us what you what what needs to be done well like i said what we know that needs to be done is for the road to be widened and we did as the county go in there and put a little bit of shoulder on it uh, that sort of thing but it's not. it was not the answer to the problem. And like you said, we call them children. I know they're young adults because they have to be old enough to be able to drive. But their driving skills are still very primary. They don't, they're not used to driving. And so uh, any kind of a obstruction or anything like that on, on the road or just uh, rain, anything like that, they're just not experienced in that. So, again, like we've said, this is public safety. So we talked about whether or not to have a bond election. And the thing about that, as you said, you have the chance of it possibly not passing any anytime you have a bond election. And, of course, this is – you could almost put this up there with the school. This is for the children. This is for the kids as much as anybody. So if you put it up for a bond election, you don't put it up for a bond election just for the people that live – and travel Woodrow Road. It's a countywide election. So you have people in Shallow Water and Idaloo and close to Abernathy in Lubbock, all that would be voting on this bond. And if it fails, then you're back at a drawing board. Whereas if the county uh, were to decide to do COs or certificates of obligation or general obligation bonds, whichever way it is to go, uh, the tax rate would have to, to increase to cover that bond. But we feel like that one project would is necessary, more necessary to do it rather than to put it out to a vote to the voters. And and isn't this what you are charged with doing? This is your real job, public safety, to make a tough decision here. Yes, Yes, absolutely. And, you know, and it is. It's a tough decision because uh, you'll have we'll have people that will call and go, well, why aren't you doing something about North Milwaukee that goes from 4th Street to the Clovis Highway? Or why don't you do something with another road in Precinct 3 or in Precinct 2? We have to look at the public safety. We have to look at the numbers when they do the traffic count. We have to look at the accidents. Unfortunately, we have to look at the fatalities. And so all of that criteria is met on Woodrow Road. And so I think that really and truly our best bet for the Lubbock County is to do either uh, certificates of obligation or general obligation bonds and to get that road fixed. But but the commissioners, uh, I'll say this and, and you can tell me whether you agree with this. I believe the commissioners need to make this decision themselves. This is not a voter issue. This is a public safety issue. Mm-hmm. You have the means to do this. You can do this without asking, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. We can. Then, then if, if, it's, if it's a public safety issue, that's your job. You need to do that, Commissioner. That's correct. That you're exactly right. Public safety is one of our charges in the county to make sure that our residents are safe. Of course, you know, the majority of the people live in the city limits of Lubbock. But it's not just uh, students or uh, individuals driving on Wood Row Road. There are lots of people from Slayton that cut through that way move, going to the west or people from the west going to the east. There's a lot of traffic uh, on that road. And so, but we know it's a, it's, it's a country road in an urban area. It's a primary feeder. We, we need to do that. We'll talk more with Commissioner Patty Jones at 1030. State Senator Charles Perry will join us. If you have questions for the commissioner, give us a call at 770-5790. This is the Chad Hasty Show 
on KFYO. This is the Chad Hasty Show. I'm Scott Mann, the Sandstorm Scholar. Patty Jones is with me, and uh, we're talking all things county. We've talked about Woodrow Road. Uh, again, Commissioner, I appreciate you being here. Uh, we've already gotten text messages uh, from former elected officials saying, yes, make that decision. That's your job. And, and, and it won't be an easy decision. No. But there will be people who disagree. And if you live up around Friendship, where I do, in Wolferth, the state's about to expand 179, so mm-hmm. don't don't say, well, what, it, what what about our road? It needs to be expanded, too. That's a state road, 179, that goes right through Bisex, the uh, Friendship High School campus. It's about to be widened. The state's going to do their job. The question everybody says to ask Patty Jones, are you going to run for county judge? <laughs> Your term's about up. Uh, you'll be uh, running again, retiring, or running for something else, one of the three. What are your plans? You know, I know a lot of people have heard me over the last number of years or whatever that want to run, to run want to run for county judge, want to run for county judge, and was kind of waiting to see what county judge Tom had, what his plans have been, what he's going to do. He says this time that he is retiring, that he, uh, and I think he probably is pretty close to that because he's, you can ask him and he's counting the days. He can, t- can pretty much <laughs> tell you the months and the days and I don't know if he's gotten to the hours or not. But, you know, I have to tell you that... Um, Looking at the position of county judge, that's something still looking at, still evaluating. What a a lot of people don't understand for elected officials such as myself, now this is on the county level, that if you decide that you want to run for another office, you, if you announce with more than a year left on your term, you have to automatically resign the position you're in. Right, it's there's no ifs ands or buts about it. There's it is no a quick, resignation. It is a resignation. If if you announce that you're running for another office in the county, then so uh, even if I were to decide that that was what I was going to do or whatever, I can't announce anything until there's a year left. I mean, uh, less than a year left on the term. And so they've done some changing on that. I need to go back and look. It may be 13 months, but yeah, since they, they changed the filing dates to November. They've changed it yeah. just enough to accommodate the filing dates. But, yes, but yes. frankly, it's still essentially a year left. Yes. Uh, and, and so what I'm hearing is, A, you've not decided. Correct. And B, you couldn't announce it right now if you had decided. That's right. Okay. That's right. So you, you heard it here first. Uh, you, uh, I was interested. I wanted to know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I guess we'll uh, invite you back when you can tell us for sure and be be glad to have you back. Now, the real reason I wanted Commissioner Jones on uh, is is to talk about uh, uh, lobbying and property tax reform. And and you and I have discussed this. Uh, During the legislature, the Ben issues come up, and and Senator Perry will come on. We'll talk about property tax reform. But talk to us about – your activities, you've been a key player among county officials in going down and testifying against the the proposed property tax reform. Tell us about that and why. Okay. Uh, in the regular session, Senate Bill 2 was considered a hot button. It was the one that talked about uh, from Senator Paul Betancourt that uh, tax, de- ta- excuse me, property tax reform. Okay. Little background. Uh, part of the reason I get invited to come to Austin to testify, I am a past president of the statewide association for the County Judges and Commissioners Association of Texas. So I have met lots of people. I know a lot of people in Austin. Um, I don't mean to make it sound make it sound uh, conceited or anything, but, but I'm they very know who well. You are. They sure. know who I am. I'm very well respected. Uh, I don't ever go in with an ugly agenda or anything. I go in to talk and to visit with folks. And okay. so I'm going to cut you off right there because we're almost at a break. That sets us up for, for, for this. We'll have Charles Perry join us. We'll let you talk more. Uh, this is the Chad Hasty Show. Uh, I'm Scott Mann. Commissioner Patty Jones has been with us, and we'll be back. We're back on the Chad Hasty Show. I'm Scott Mann, the Sandstorm Scholar. C- Commissioner Precinct 4, Patty Jones, is with me. We're going to go straight to Charles Perry. Senator Charles Perry uh, is, is called in from Austin. He's down there working for us. Senator, welcome. Thanks for being here. This is your bill. Tell us, uh, or, uh, tell us about property tax reform, why we need it. Well, 
I think anybody, if you ask in Texas, they'd say that's one of the taxes that seems to be the biggest concern in making the payments. The largest tax that Texans will pay is their property tax bill. It's literally pricing people out of their homes. It's more prevalent in our um, urban areas. Harris County has experienced double-digit growth rates along with uh, high effective tax rate increases each year. And if you project that out within six to seven years, you can literally be paying what your mortgage is or more than what your house is worth in property tax payments. So it's a real issue for a large part of our bigger city areas. Uh, it's an issue for... You know, I think anybody in Lubbock County would argue that their property tax bills can't get any higher. And I understand uh, the reason property taxes exist. We don't have other means in Texas. We chose to finance our, our governments on the property tax system, but we can arguably say that it can't keep growing at the pace it's growing. So uh, SB1 in the special session specifically goes to trying to limit or at least govern, put a governor around the growth of government by giving a voice to, that, to the voters to approve those growth increases in government. Okay. At what level? Where where does that kick in uh, with SB1, Senator? So with SB1, it was sent out to the Senate at 4%, which is half of the current rollback rate. The rollback rate currently exists at 8%. So uh, this would say 4%. Is the rollback rate meaning if you go above that that you have to have an automatic election to get voter approval? But we'll understand this: that four percent is plus growth. If you've got growth in your community, we don't want to stifle growth. You need infrastructure, you need roads, you need you need plumbing, you need all those things that go into growth. And so, whatever the growth factor is, you're unlimited. So you take a Harris County if they've got you know double digit growth, they're not going to be impeded on funding that tax system. Uh, because they're going to have 4% plus the growth. So we're not trying to stop the growth of government. We understand growth is a good thing, and we're not going to put that inside the rollback cap. Okay. Commissioner Jones, uh, he took almost exactly two minutes. Uh, take a couple of minutes and tell us why mm-hmm. this is a bad idea. You know, in Senate Bill, uh, actually Senate Bill 2, in the regular session when it started, and the first time that I went down to testify, there were some good uh points to Senate Bill 2 in the appraisal process and some of the wording and some things like that. But uh, the biggest thing that I think what we're looking at is that when the senator is talking, and by the way, Senator, I do appreciate what you're doing and the time you've spent down there, and you've had to make some very difficult decisions. Uh, But as I was telling Scott a while ago, that uh, that's part of our democracy, that we're not all all always going to agree on on the same issue. And it's not that I am not for property tax reform. I am 100 percent. But, you know, with what you're talking about is on cities and counties. And I think special districts and those are are all involved in that. But um, the issue that as a county that we look at and I'm sitting here from our uh, current budget book that we have, you know, for a a home in Lubbock County. I'm not talking about what's predictive to next year, what what we are under right now. You know, the average home is in Lubbock County is valued at $130,489. So that puts the total taxes. This is school district, city of Lubbock, and Lubbock County. 16.9% is Lubbock County. 24% is city of Lubbock. 58.38 is school district. And so that's that's been the issue, I think, more than anything. Uh, and we've not had the uh, the problem with the rollback rate in Lubbock County, but it's the fact that we feel that, you know, school funding is what needs to be looked at because uh, in Lubbock County, the only time we've ever reached our rollback rate, and we never did reach it, we were there, we were 7.99, mine, nine, nine was uh, several years after we, right about the time we opened the new jail, 10, 11, right in there, when we raised our tax rate because our bond election was only for brick and mortar. It didn't have anything to do with uh, the people that were going to be needed in there. So we ended up uh, doing it then. Now, we've not had a problem with the rollback rate uh, other than those couple of times right there. Okay. Then I, I want to, I'm going to interrupt here, Senator. I want to ask you, if, if it doesn't affect Lubbock County, I think everyone pretty well agrees it does not affect Lubbock County. Why is a Lubbock County office holder going down and working against property tax reform? If it does, did, is that what we elected you to do? Is my question. What I was elected to do, and I, what I've tried to do in my tenure that I've had with Lubbock County, is to make the best educated decisions for Lubbock County, 
and to be able to uh, keep our tax rate low, but to provide the services that our citizens are asking for. But going down and looking at it, uh, again, as I said well ago, yes, Lubbock County, but I am also past president of the state association, and so I'm very well known throughout the state, um, very recognized, uh, also in the House and the Senate somewhat. We've got, a, you know, it's what I was looking at yesterday that uh, for this session we had three new freshman senators and six sophomores, and we had 25 freshmen uh, in the House. And, and I, I acknowledge uh, you, you've done a lot of good work in the county, in the in the association. But is that did we elect you to go represent school districts' interest against Lubbock ta County taxpayers? Is that what do you, is that what we should expect from a county commissioner? Well, you know, when Lubbock County commissioners uh, for so many years, <coughs> pardon me, uh, has been thought of as rural. It's a rural county that uh, we take care of roads. We don't do you know. A little bit of other things, but that's mostly what we've done. Lubbock County is an urban county. We're 17th or 18th largest in the state now out of 254 counties. And so looking at this, uh, I don't want to say it was picking a fight or whatever, but with the bill that came out and it saying that cities and counties are our problems, we need a rollback rate on them to control them. Okay, Harris County, yeah, I did some research them. On them, they've got nearly 500 special districts down there, and they've got they don't really have hardly any control over them. You know, our education that we have, we're 46th in the state of Texas. I mean, the United States in funding. That rather, I guess you could say that in defense of the cities and the counties, that we wanted our story told. We wanted to be known that we didn't feel like counties, which is what I represent, are the issues. Okay. That they need to look at that look at more at school funding because you know I looked at uh, several of the members of the Senate Finance Committee. There's one in particular that has a seventy percent of that individual's tax rate is a school property tax. Seventy percent. Okay, let's uh, Senator talk about that. Uh, are the school districts included in this? And 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 what what can be done? We all know the biggest ta part of our tax bill are the school districts. Uh, well, what can be done there? Sure. So, number one, they already have an automatic election. And I think that's the heart of this legislation is giving the voters an active role and voice back into the process of taxation. It's not specifically to the rollback. It's not the rate itself. It's been, there were some great transparency measures in that. But the schools already, if they raise their rate, they already have an automatic election requirement. They have to have a voter approval out there. So, what we're asking is give that voice back to. The second thing, and what's not being addressed, and when they throw the school districts out, that this is the biggest share. And there's no doubt your school districts are your biggest portion of your property tax system. But we are a half-full, half-empty concept there. So when our property values decline in Texas, and we've had a tremendous amount of growth in value, we have benefited as a state because our contribution to the local school districts goes down as those values increase. However, there will be a leveling or a potential decline in those values at some point or for what other reasons that may impact those values uh, through exemptions and stuff that the state will actually be looked to to make up that difference. So the school districts in the state of Texas, the way we fund them, yeah, arguably we need to do them differently and, and we're looking at options, but we are a half full, half empty, meaning if it, if it goes down on a local level, if values decline, the state makes up the difference. If the state has the benefit of those increases, which we have for the last few years, but I can tell you, uh, as recent as 9 and 11, through that process, those values were down, and the state had some tough decisions to make as far as managing the, those school dollars. We made some hard decisions on funding, but we were still looked to to make up as much of that decline as we could possibly do. So that school district argument is a little bit uh, false because we will at some point be asked to make up differences in value declines. Secondly, though, and the most important thing I think you got to remember, school districts already have an automatic election. And that's what is understanding 4% or 8% and the effect on local budget, that's one discussion. But the argument against giving a voter the option to come before the county or the city or either taxing jurisdiction and say, 
We want to know why you're asking for the increase. And if it's worthy of our consideration, we will vote for it positively or negatively. But give us the right to do it without hurdles to jump through. That's the heart of what this bill's about. And that's what's kind of frustrating and un- doesn't make sense to me that any, any taxing official at any level would ever have a problem giving a voter an active role in that increase uh, tax rate. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't understand that argument. We're coming up on a break, and we'll, we'll give uh, Commissioner Jones uh, an opportunity to, uh, to answer that. And, and just to talk a little bit about how we got a county commissioner out there representing the schools, uh, which is a question in my mind. We're delighted to have you. This is the Chad Hasty Show, uh, News Talk 790, KFYO, AM 95.1. I'm Scott Mann. Patty Jones and Charles Perry are with me, and we'll be back for more. We're back on the Chad Hasty Show, our final segment. Uh, I have Charles Perry, uh, Senator Charles Perry, who's called in. We have Commissioner Patty Jones. Okay, Commissioner Jones, two questions. I'll just ask them the way I ask questions. Number one is I said, how did we get a county commissioner out lobbying on behalf of school districts, and number two, do you not trust the the Lubbock County voter? Let's bring it down to Lubbock. Do you not trust the Lubbock County voter if taxes need to be increased more than 4% to, to listen to the case that you make and say yes or no to that? No, I do believe that voters ought to have a say. You know, we talked in an earlier segment that there's some things that we are charged with that we sure. need to make hard decisions on. Now, I will tell you that when I have been to Austin – um, one of the trips that I made this time, I went down and uh, testified for, for the Senate finance on indigent defense cost. Well, you know, there was some work done on that to get more funding for that. It really didn't happen or anything. But through indigent defense and the Indif- indigent defense commission for our RPDO, the regional public defender's office, we got a $3 million grant for Lubbock County. So I'm not going to say that the work's not... Um, that we can not, we don't receive something from it. Sure. That I'm not just spending oh, money. Oh, there's something. Yeah, right. I think no one, no one could question. I'd rather see you do the lobbying yourself than pay somebody else to do it, like Absolutely. the city does. Absolutely. Uh, the, the question becomes: How did we? Why lobby against the taxpayer having the final say over more than four percent increase? I'm not lobbying against the. The voter having the four percent increase—I mean, having the vo- the uh, the vote okay. to have the increase. I'm not against them having the the capability of that. The big picture, looking at everything, is that, and it's just like Representative—I mean, excuse me, uh, Senator Perry said a while ago that right now the state of Texas is in a, in a growth mode. Everybody's appraisals are going up. Same way here in Lubbock County for the school district, for the city, for the county. So that makes more money available locally versus on the state. I know people want their property taxes to come down, but I don't think anybody wants their uh, to see a decline in appraisals around here. And, and the reason I say that is that when you start on a downhill slide, your property then becomes worth less that when you get ready to sell. I mean, you can talk to – you can pull somebody out and ask them, uh, no, they don't like the property tax amount they're paying, but would you sell your house for the dollar amount that's listed on their appraisal district? In a heartbeat. No, uh, not the responses I get, that they want more than what's on their appraisal district or some that they know that they're not appraised at as high as they should be appraised at. Okay. But – And that makes sense. Let me ask you, Senator Perry, uh, we appreciate you being on the line. Uh, What are you hearing from constituents? Uh, We've seen some of the testimony from elected officials. What are you hearing from voters? What are they telling you? Well, I think I think I polled property taxes a few years back. Eighty-seven percent of the people responded they wanted to get rid of it. So, so there is a disdain for the property tax system. I get it. I appreciate it. That's not realistic to get rid of it. So, I think that what we're trying to do is give people an active voice back in their government. You know, a lot of times we hear voter apathy. Nobody's engaged, and part of it is because. We have allowed barriers, i.e. petitions and things, to get in the way of that engagement because people are busy, people are making a living to pay taxes and do things they need to do, and then they see a barrier to go and argue about why they need that extra money at the governmental level. So 
I, I think that constituents and one and the lack of transparency. You know, you said that people wouldn't sell their property for what it's appraised of. I can tell you, the state has forced this, and to, to the county and the city's uh, defense at some level. Comptroller came out a few years back and said, "You're going to have a, a a uniform system for valuing these homes and these businesses." So it has stepped up. Uh, did this to be fair? So it depends on where your zip code is, whether your valuation was accurate or not. So we're pretty accurate, I think, across the board. But constituents are saying, "Hey, give us transparency and and limit the growth, or at least give us a voice." And I think that's what this bill is about. Okay. I do want to qualify. We have some really good commissioners working on some really tough stuff. And anybody that's in public office, the challenges of balancing those budgets is the same at the local, state, and federal levels. And truth of the matter is, we got a whole lot of people trying to eat out of the same pocket. That's right. And, and that that's pocket's only one pocket. So we just all, I think, work towards making sure we don't take no more than we need. Senator Perry, thank you. Thank Commissioner you Jones, thank you very much for being here on the Chad Hasty Show.